everyone. Welcome back to my kitchen. My name is Mindy Banks. I'm the Flip Flop Chef and today I'm going to show you how to make a potato and ham chowder using leftover ham from a previous recipe that I've shown you guys on my channel making a pressure cooker ham using the deluxe multi cooker. So today we're going to take the leftover ham and we're going to make it into a soup also using the deluxe multi cooker. So if you're not familiar with the deluxe multi cooker it is very similar to our previous model which was the quick cooker and I do have a playlist on my channel that shows you lots of recipes that you can use in either of those models. There's a couple things you can't do in the quick cooker, but most things you're gonna still be able to do in that. And this is also something that you can make in your Instapot if you have one. So let's go ahead and turn this on. There's a power switch on the back. And I wanna show you a really cool feature that we have here, and that is <clears throat> this lid rest. You can prop the lid on the right or the left side so that it doesn't drip um, down onto your countertop. It will just drip into this little area on the top of your pressure cooker, and then you can just wipe it clean. So that's any steam that might build up here. Um, makes it really easy to clean when you're finished and you don't have a mess on your counter, and you don't have to find a place to put the lid. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off on the sear setting. So I'm gonna turn this to the second um, position, which is the second cooking um, pre program setting, and I'm going to press start. Um, the sear setting is just like if you put a pot on top of your stove, and you can cook on the, the, in the sear setting here just like you would on the stove top if you were doing something there. So, what we're going to do is we're going to add a tablespoon of olive oil, and then I'm going to add three, uh, excuse me, um, four tablespoons of butter. Add that in there. So you're gonna get the flavor from both the butter and the oil. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna chop up some vegetables. We're gonna add some celery and some onion to our pot in just a few minutes. This takes about two minutes to start heating up and then that butter will start melting and the oil will heat together. Um, we're gonna use our manual food processor to chop our onion and our celery. So I have both of those ingredients in our reusable silicone bags. I really am falling in love with these. These are brand new to Pamper Chef and we have four different sizes so let me show you all of them and I'll tell you what I have in each of these so that you can see them. So this is the small one and <clears throat> these are very easy to open and to close which I really really like and oh I don't think that was on the, I didn't have the time. Hang on a second. Pampered not perfect right? Let me press cancel. Oh it was on one minute so let me change that. <laughs> Let's see. Usually the default is 20, so I don't know how it ended up on one minute, but. All right, let's try this again. So we're gonna continue to melt the butter there. Let me tell you about these um, silicone bags. So this one here is the smallest size. I really like this. This will hold like an eight ounce block of cheese or whatever's left from the eight ounce block of cheese if you open it and then need to store the rest. They're easy to open and close. They have this zipper, um, zipper closure. So let me show you guys, this is how you can open and close them. You just slide this across and it's a nice tight seal and then to open them you just pull them apart. This one here has some um, bacon bits so I just cooked this bacon in a skillet on the stove top and then you can put it in the refrigerator and you have it as you need it. We're going to use some of this for this recipe and then I'm going to save some of it to go on top of baked potatoes um, for a different recipe. So that's the small one and <clears throat> The next one we have is a medium one, and this medium one, I have um, some celery ribs in here. So these were left over from a vegetable tray that I had, and um, you'll see that there's like a little uh, window so you can see what's inside. But the other cool thing is you can use a dry erase marker on here, and you can actually label these. So if you're putting something in there that needs to be labeled, you can use your dry erase marker. So I've got our celery, we'll chop some of that up. And then this is our sandwich bag. So the difference in this one and the other ones that I showed you is that this one opens on two sides. So you can open this to slide a sandwich in and not squish it. Um, if you were to try to slide a sandwich in here, you would probably um, mess it up a little bit trying to get it in there. But this is not just for sandwiches. You can use it for other things, so like leftover onions or other vegetables. And then this is our large bag, and I just have carrots in this to store in the refrigerator. So um, you can see I've got my carrots in there. Pull some out because match the color matches the bag, <laughs> and it's same thing. These are really easy to open and close. So we are going to use some carrots. I already have those out. I'm going to give this just a little stir here, and let's go ahead and get our onions chopped up so that we can get this moving along because our pot is hot. It takes two minutes for that to heat up. And these silicone bags, they are dishwasher safe. Um, my recommendation is to um, turn them inside out so that they clean really well. Hopefully I didn't put too much onion in there. Nope, okay, we're gonna be good. So you're gonna pull the handle all the way up and let it go all the way down. I'll tell you more about this in just a second when we 
is the celery. I just want to go ahead and get our onion in here. I'm going to just scrape that off the top. Oops, I have one little chunk in there. All right. We don't want this to burn, so let's go ahead. You don't want your butter and oil to burn. Toss that around. And then we'll chop up our celery and we'll add that in. Now, if you don't have leftover ham, then you can, of course, buy the ham already pre-cooked at the grocery store for this recipe. You could either buy um, like the thick cut lunch meat, if you like, or you can get it at the deli and just tell them how much that you need. Let's chop up our celery. Now, if you're left-handed, um, you're gonna flip this around. So let me show you how I use it because I'm right-handed. So my left hand goes here, my right hand goes here, and you pull all the way up and all the way down. If you're left-handed, you're just gonna flip the lid around, put your right hand here, and you're gonna push forward with your left hand. So let's chop this up. And we're gonna add this right into our pot. Already smells so good. We're gonna add some garlic. And then we're going to dice some carrots, add those in, and we're just going to use the sear setting for quite a while until we're ready to pressure cook, and then that's going to be when we put the lid on. All right, so let's go ahead and keep moving on. We're going to take three cloves of garlic. I'm going to use Pampered Chef's garlic press for this. Um, I love that there's a cleaning tool attached. I'm just going to pop off three cloves of garlic here and press these right over our pot. And you notice I don't have to peel them, just press right through that paper skin. Whoops, get my spatula out for the moment. And then this little comb, you just place it inside of those little holes and it's gonna release that paper skin. Let's do this two more times. It's gonna add so much wonderful flavor. And I like using fresh garlic, just it's much easier for me than trying to keep it in the refrigerator. And if you're not careful, if you have refrigerated garlic, um, it can go rancid and actually can cause botulism. So you have to be really, really careful if you have jarred garlic. You don't want it to expire because you could get sick from that. So that's another reason that I like to just use um, fresh garlic. And then we'll just toss this paper into the trash. And let's get our carrots ready to go. So I've got a few carrots here. I'm gonna peel these. Um, we have three different peelers in our set. So this is the vegetable peeler. This is the serrated peeler, or excuse me, this is the um, julienne peeler, and this is the serrated peeler. Either one of these works fine for this step. Toss that garlic around a little bit. Um, I'm gonna use the regular vegetable peeler first. And just know these are super, super sharp. So be careful with these. These are also dishwasher safe, so they're easy to clean. Just toss them in the dishwasher. So we're gonna first just peel our carrots. And you can use this on any vegetable that you need to peel. I'll show you our serrated peeler too. The serrated peeler is the orange one. This is great for um, things that have a softer skin. So like kiwi, um, peaches, nectarines, um, anything that has a soft, Skin that a regular peeler is not going to work on. Toss this in the garbage and then we're going to use our crinkle cutter. I like this. You just take the little cover off and we're going to dice this up. Give these just a quick little stir. There we go. And we'll transfer this into our pot. Now, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to use the comment section, and I'm happy to get back to you with any questions that you have. And um, if you see products that you like during this video, I would love the opportunity to be your consultant. Um, I do sell Pampered Chef products, and so anything I sell, I do earn commission on. So if you learn from my videos, I would love um, for you to shop with me and reach out anytime that you have questions. All right, toss these in here. And I love these flexible cutting mats because it makes it really, really easy for you to just scoop this up and toss it in. And I managed to lose only one piece. <laughs> All right, wash my hands up here. And then we're gonna get the rest of our ingredients ready to go. So, so far we have our um, onion, celery, garlic, 
carrots, and then of course we have the butter and the oil in there. We're gonna add um, a half a teaspoon of both pepper and salt. So I'm gonna measure the salt first, and then I'll use the same spoon for the pepper. And I ground these up. These, this is our pink Himalayan sea salt that you can purchase from me. And I ground it up in our deluxe cooking blender. And I also ground up peppercorns in the deluxe cooking blender. So you have a couple of um, new ideas to add to your cooking. I'm gonna use a half a tablespoon um, of Pampered Chef's Herbs to Province seasoning. So I love this. This one is a blend of thyme, fennel, rosemary, and lavender. And you can use this so many different ways. Toss this around. Now just so you know, when you're searing, unless you've had this in here for a long, long time, the rim of this is not gonna be too hot for you to touch. So if you notice me touching it, just know that it's not very hot, but if you were to um, try to touch this after a pressure cooker setting, it is gonna be hot and it would burn you. So just always be cautious of that. So let's go ahead and get our potatoes ready. Um, I'm not gonna peel the potatoes for this recipe. Um, so these have already been washed. I'm just gonna dice them up and you could use the crinkle cutter or you could use a knife, it's totally up to you. And we're just gonna dice these and toss them in. And you could use any potato that you have. These are actually baking potatoes. Um, that's what I had on hand, and so that's what I'm using. You could use red potatoes, you could have gold potatoes, whatever you have. So we're gonna dice these up, toss them in, and then we're gonna add some chicken broth. And we are going to cook this under pressure. So right now we just want those vegetables to be nice and tender. Okay? Now, if you're new to my channel, I hope you'll click the subscribe button while you're here. Then you'll be notified anytime I post new content. And I hope you'll also go to theflipflopchef.com. And that's where you're going to find thousands of recipes, including this one. And I also have a weekly giveaway every single Friday. So to enter in the giveaway, every Friday you're just going to look for the Flip Flop Friday post and just leave your comment and tell me that you would like to win. Um, there's no strings attached. It's just a really fun way for me to kind of share Pampered Chef products and get them in your hands so that you can try them out. All right. So we're going to add these potatoes. I had a couple more out, but I think two is going to be more than enough. Toss that a little bit. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add our chicken broth. And so um, I have two and a quarter cups of chicken broth measured out here. And after you measure that out, this one, or excuse me, after you pour it in, just give this a quick little stir and scrape the bottom of the pot. And that way you can deglaze the pan if there's anything on the bottom. I don't think that there was anything stuck, but that's a good way for you to get that off. All right. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add our ham, and this is pre-cooked ham, and I actually cooked a whole ham in the same deluxe multi-cooker. So pressure cooker ham, it's um, coated in um, mustard sauce and brown sugar and cooked with pineapple juice and Coca-Cola. So it's really easy, very, very little hands-on time, and you get this massive ham that you can serve for several days. So I have some leftover ham, so we're gonna go ahead and stir that in. And I just cut that into smaller, like bite-sized pieces. It was a spiral ham, so it was already sliced. I just had to um, cut those up. Mix this together. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to take our lid, put this on. I'm gonna turn this where I can actually see it better this time and give you guys a closer look too. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna press the X button because we're no longer gonna be searing. So for the next step, we're going to pressure cook. I'm gonna to go to the custom setting and that's actually a high pressure. Um, you're gonna press the wheel to adjust the time and I'm actually gonna reduce this down to just five minutes. And then press and hold. And you see how it says run? Let me flip this around a little bit. Hopefully you guys can see. So it says run. And what's happening now is this pot is going to pressurize. And so there's a little progress wheel here at the bottom and you'll see that it starts to fill in as the steam builds up and the pressure builds up inside of the pot. Right now the lid is loose. However, when this is under pressure, the lid will not be loose. You will not be able to take it off until you release the steam. And I will show you how to do that when we get to that step. 
So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna wait for the pot to pressurize. And since we did start on a sear setting, it's gonna pressurize a lot faster than if you started on a cold, with a cold pot. And so that's just a little trick. Even if a recipe tells you, or excuse me, doesn't tell you to start on a sear setting, I always like to put a little oil in the bottom, add my meat, and then to put it on sear, and then continue to add everything so that I go ahead and start heating up the food, heating up the pot, and then it will pressurize 50 to 75% faster when you start on a sear setting. So we're gonna let this cook for five minutes once it starts counting down, and then we're gonna leave it alone and let it do a natural release for 10 minutes before we release the steam. So you guys hang tight. Um, I'll come back in a few minutes when this is ready to show you the next step, and we'll finish up our um, ham and potato chowder. So I'll see you soon, okay? All right, you guys, I'm back, and I wanted to let you know that this took about eight minutes to come up to pressure, and it started counting down from five minutes. So we have four minutes left, and when that time is up, we're gonna let this naturally release, meaning just let it sit there, for 10 minutes before we release the rest of the steam. So hang tight, and we're gonna finish this up. Hey everyone, I'm back. I just wanna let you know that we are up to um, two minutes on our uh, natural release time. And so once the pressure cooker counts down and finishes the cooking cycle, it's gonna automatically switch over to a keep warm setting. And it does display that on here. Um, and then it starts counting up to let you know how long the cooking cycle has been finished. Also helps when you're trying to time that natural release time. So we're gonna wait until it's at 10 minutes and then I'll come back and I'll show you how to release the steam and we'll finish up our recipe. See you soon. Hey everyone, I'm back and let's go ahead and finish up our soup. So you'll notice here on the display that it shows 10 minutes and it's on the keep warm setting and so that basically tells us that this has been done cooking for 10 minutes which also means it's been naturally releasing the steam also for 10 minutes. So what we need to do now is release the steam. So what I'm gonna do since I'm standing in the way of where the steam is gonna come out, I'm gonna rotate my deluxe multi cooker around. On the front of the, the multi cooker, there's an X. I'm gonna press that to stop um, the keep warm setting and then I'm gonna press the steam button to release the steam. So you guys can see this, it makes a little chime and then it releases the steam. <clears throat> you always wanna make sure that nobody or nothing <laughs> is gonna be in the way of where that steam is gonna come out because it is gonna be hot and so you wanna be really careful when you're releasing the steam. And so when this is done, I'll show you how to take the lid off and then we're gonna finish up the recipe. We're gonna add some corn. Um, the recipe I'm using calls for some frozen corn and I had just a tiny, tiny bit left in this bag. So we're gonna toss that in, but we're also gonna add some fresh corn. So I'm gonna show you guys how to use our kernel cutter and then we're gonna mash um, the potatoes and some of the carrots in with our chowder. So this is the kernel cutter. Um, I'll actually zoom in so you guys can see. Um, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do this inside of our large silicone bowl because I don't want these kernels to go all over my counter. So I'm just gonna pr press this straight down all the way around. And if this is uncooked corn. If you had leftover corn um, cobs from a previous meal, then you could certainly use those. It's okay if it's cooked or not cooked. Oops. Now, the really cool thing about this, if, if you're trying to make cream corn, you're gonna be able to get the milk from the cob when you scrape the corn off. Um, I'm a Southern girl and when you make corn, cream corn, you have to cut the corn off and then you go back and you scrape the um, corn cobs. But with this tool, you can actually do it all at the same time. So we're gonna finish the second corn cob and all of our steam is released. So let's go ahead and finish this up. So I'm gonna turn this just a little bit and you can rotate your lid and this has this really cool lid rest. I'm just gonna let some of that steam fall down in there. And this has a little lid rest. I think before I had it on the other side. So it really doesn't matter which side that you have it on. Um, I actually want you guys to see this. Hang on a second, let me grab a shirt. <clears throat> because this looks amazing and I want you guys to see it. So um, this time, this pot is extremely hot now. So let's see if I can tilt this so that you guys can see um, all this goodness in there. It smells so, so good right now. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna stir in the corn that I just cut off the cob. So we're gonna put that in first. And then you see all that milk? So that's coming, that's the milk from the corn cobs. And then a little bit of frozen corn that I have. I'm gonna toss that in as well because 
no reason to waste that. Um, and I'm going to just give this a little stir. Then we're going to take our potato masher, which I really love. This thing is so cool. So it stores flat. So if you wanted to keep this in a drawer, you just slide it in the drawer. It's not going to be um, hitting the top of your cabinet. Um, and then what you're going to do to open this up is you squeeze here and you see how that kind of fell and loosened that. Look at that. So cool. And so this is your, just your kind of your, like your old fashioned potato masher. Just make sure that you're gentle so that you don't splash any of this on you because it is very hot. So we're just mashing the potatoes and the carrots. Everything else isn't going to really change. All right, so we're going to mash this. And then this is a dishwasher safe potato masher as well. All right, so next I'm going to pour in one cup of milk. Pour that in, splash it on myself. Give this a little stir. <clears throat> and I'm gonna put this on a sear setting because we're actually gonna add a thickener to thicken this up. So I'm gonna press the X button to cancel out where we were releasing the steam, turn it to the sear setting, press and hold to start that uh, 20 minute timer. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a quarter cup of flour and a half a cup of heavy whipping cream. Mix this together. And that was whole milk that I used that I just stirred in. So I'm gonna use our mini whipper here just to whisk the uh, flour into the heavy whipping cream. And then we're gonna actually use a ladle and take out a little bit of this broth and add it to this mixture. And then we're stir it in to thicken up the soup. Now, um, oh, we gotta put some bacon in there. So put some bacon in. And I'm not gonna use all this because I'm saving some of this for um, another recipe. So our bacon bits. Let me wash my hands. I was trying to pour it in there, but I didn't want to. I didn't want to go in. <laughs> All right. Now let's finish whipping this up. So this is nice and thick. The the flour with the heavy cream. So I'm just going to take our ladle and get some of the broth out of here. And then I'm just going to pour it on the opposite side. Get some of the. We're just going to strain some of that out, and then mix this together. And then we're going to stir it into the soup. So now it's boiling again, since I have it on that sear setting. Set my ladle aside. Pour this in. And just stir this. This will help thicken it up, and that cream is going to make this even creamier. Now, when I serve this, I'm going to put cheese on the top. You could put more bacon bits if you like, um, or you could eat it just the way that it is. But this is going to be delicious. And it was using leftover ham, so that's the great thing. I like when I, when I can make one thing and then use it for, um, use the leftovers for something else. So let me show you what we have here. I'll zoom in and give you guys a closer look. Check this out. Doesn't this look amazing? I can't wait to eat this for lunch. Now I'm gonna press the uh, cancel button on there because I don't want this to be too hot. So I'm actually gonna let it start cooling off before I eat it. And um, this will actually be dinner for tonight as well. And so it makes a lot of soup. So you can um, make this once and eat on it for a couple of days unless you just have a big family. But if you do, then it's gonna feed a crowd. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I look forward to seeing you the next time. Don't forget to go to theflipflopchef.com and click the button at the top to join my recipe group and click subscribe on this channel while you're here so that you'll know anytime that I offer a new video. So that's it for now, but I'll see you next time. Take care.